Very same year in 1993, a talented young journalist named Stuart Scott joined ESPN. Stuart would soon become one of the most recognizable and beloved Sports Center anchors ever, and forever change the tone and language of sports broadcasting. But he didn't just add phrases like booyah and cooler than the other side of the pillow to the lexicon. He brought his wit, his attitude, and a lust for life all his own. In November 2007, sadly, Stuart was diagnosed with cancer. True to his form, Stuart shared his experiences fighting this disease with us while managing to do extraordinary things in the face of seemingly unsurmountable odds. Stuart's journey has been full of great challenges, but even greater has been the love from his family. And like the great man his award is named for, Stuart has never, ever given up. Are you ready, young man? Yeah. Uh, uh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday in Baltimore, Maryland. Doctor visits have become routine for Stuart Scott. But today is different. Today, he finds out if he qualifies for an experimental treatment, a trial he's already been rejected from twice before. But giving up has never been an option for Stuart. Since he was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in 2007, he has refused to back down. First thought was, I'm going to die. And about probably five seconds later, I'm going to die and I'm going to leave Taylor and see. I don't want them to be without a dad. Cancer kills you. People die from cancer. <sighs> and now we wait. Stewart would not allow the disease to dictate how he lived. And for seven years, he's continued to battle. He's a fighter, and when I say he's a fighter, he's mentally, physically, emotionally. He has a lot of things to fight for, and he has a lot of help in that fight. He's an inspiration to me. I have to feel as much as I can like I don't have cancer. Although, I think about cancer 20 times a day. But his true focus remains on the most important thing in his life, his family. Oh! Way to go, girl! One thing that Stuart may never really understand is the impact that he has had on people all around the world. There are a lot of people that see him as a beacon of light and something that they can relate to. I hear you're in a fight, too. Yeah. I'm seven years in. Are you? Yep. Well. You do what you want to do, all right? Yep. Hang in there, brother. Thank you very much. Hang in there. Brother. We're Good thinking luck. about you, all right? Are we going to be on television? We might be. You ought to tell me that. What's good? Sports Center rolling. Stuart Scott here. We got more of us. I think what he does is all the things that, as his close friend, I want to say, stop doing. Stop working out so hard. Stop traveling so much. Why are you doing so many sports centers? But it's what keeps him going. So Stuart pushes on. That is how he wins. I hear from people every day. He's on TV, and he's doing what he loves. They take strength from the fact that he has not been paralyzed by his illness, and that he's decided to live life on his own terms. After being rushed to the hospital during the NBA Finals a year ago, Stewart vowed to make it back here. Thank you very much, and congratulations again to the now five-time champion, San Antonio Spurs. So this year, on Father's Day, Game 5 was about more than just a championship. It was about family. Instead of sending you home tomorrow, I get to go home with you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yay, Spurs. When people ask me, are you worried or are you scared? I've never really been really worried because he's always told me, he's always had the most confidence ever, and he's always told me that he's going to get through it and that we're going to get through it together. She knows what I'm going through. And if I can work hard, it's not just being the best, it's working hard. It's her knowing that I'm, that I'm working hard for this. I want her to take that with her. Back at Johns Hopkins, Stewart finally receives word about the clinical trial. Good enough, Everything okay. is a go. Yeah. So there we go. 
clinical study. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't want you to leave. Will you hold my hand? Fighting is winning. Not quitting. Not saying, oh, I have cancer or I can't do anything. I'm just going to lay down and, and cry a pity party for myself. That, to me, is the only way you lose. Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need. I've been fighting it for seven years, so that sucks. You've had to deal with it for seven years. But I've been fighting it for seven years, so that's good. Seven years, you've, you've battled it. And if, if losing the battle is passing away, then I guess I haven't lost the battle. But darling, stay with me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my profound honor to present the 2014 Jimmy V Perseverance Award to Stuart Scott. Thank you. You know, tomorrow all my boys are gonna be like, yo man, I saw you at the ESPYs with Peyton Manning, Money Mayweather and KD. I'm gonna be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jack Bauer saved the world and he introduced me. <laughs> 24 is my favorite TV show of all time, so Kiefer Sutherland, thank you very much. I am very honored. Every day I am reminded that our life's journey is really about the people who touch us. When I first heard that I was going to be honored with this reward, the very first thing that I did was I was speechless, briefly. I've presented this award before. I mean, I've watched in awe as Kay Yao and Eric Legrand and all these other great people grace this stage. And although intellectually I get it, I'm a public figure, I have a public job, I'm battling cancer, hopefully I'm inspiring. At my gut level, I really didn't think that I belonged with those great people. But I listened to what Jim Valvano said 21 years ago. The most poignant seven words ever uttered in any speech anywhere. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Those great people didn't. Coach Valvano didn't. So to be honored with this, I now have a responsibility to also not ever give up. I'm not special. I just listen to what the man said. I listen to all that he said, everything that he asked of us, and that's to build the V Foundation. And let me tell you, man, it works. I'm talking tangible benefits. You saw me in that clinical trial. Now, here's the thing about that. Coach Valvano's words 21 years ago, helping me and thousands of people like me right now, direct benefits. That's why all of this, why we're here tonight, that's why it's so important. I also realized something else recently. You heard me kind of allude to it in the piece. I said, I'm not losing. I'm still here, I'm fighting. I'm not losing. But I gotta amend that. When you die, that does not mean that you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. So live, live, fight like hell. And when you get too tired to fight, then lay down and rest and let somebody else fight for you. That's also very, very important. I can't do this don't give up thing all by myself. I got thousands of people on Twitter and on the streets who encourage me. I got these amazingly wonderful people at ESPN. I got corporate executives, my bosses, this is true, 
who will text message me. And they'll say, hey, uh, heard you had chemotherapy today. You want me to stop by on the way home from work and pick you up something to eat and bring it to you? Seriously? Who does that? <laughs> Whose boss does that? My bosses do that. But even with all that, the fight is still much more difficult than I even realized. What you didn't see in the piece is what's gone on probably the last 10 days. I just got out of the hospital this past Friday. Seven days stay. Man, I crashed. I had liver complications, I had kidney failure. I had four surgeries in a span of seven days. I had tubes and wires running in and out of every part of my body. And guys, when I say every part of my body, every part of my body. As of Sunday, I didn't even know if I'd make it here. I couldn't fight. But doctors and nurses could. The people that I love, my friends and family, they could fight. My girlfriend, who slept on a very uncomfortable hospital cot by my side every night, she could fight. The people that I love did last week what they always do. They visited, they talked to me, they listened to me, they sat silent sometimes, they loved me. And that's another one of the components of the V Foundation. This whole fight, this journey thing is not a solo venture. This is something that requires support. I called my big sister Susan a few days ago. Why? I needed to cry. It was that simple. And I know that I can call her, I can call my other sister Cynthia, my brother Stephen, my mom and dad, and I can just cry. And those things are very important. I have one more necessity. Yeah, it's really two. Two very vibrant, intelligent, beautiful young ladies. The best thing I've ever done, the best thing I will ever do, is be a dad to Taylor and Sydney. It's true. I can't ever give up because I can't leave my daughters. Yes, sometimes I embarrass them. Sometimes they think I'm a tyrant. That's a direct quote. There is an adjective that described tyrant too, but I'm not gonna go there. But Taylor and Sydney, I love you guys more than I will ever be able to express. You two are my heartbeat. I am standing on this stage here tonight because of you. My oldest daughter, Taylor, I wanted her to be here, but college sophomore, summer school, second semester, starting this week. Baby girl, I love you, but you go do you. You go do that. My littlest angel is here, my 14-year-old. Sydney, come up here and give Dad a hug, because I need one. I want to say thank you, ESPN. Thank you, ESPYs. Thank all of you. Have a great rest of your night and have a great rest of your life.